Good evening, Internet. This is Poser P. Uh, I'm doing a series of relatively quick, hopefully around 10 minutes a piece, tutorials on how to program the Kurzweil PC3. Now, there are some great tutorials on the Kurzweil website. That's kurzweil.com. And I highly recommend that you go and watch those. Uh, but for those who are interested in just jumping right into programming, I want to show you how to do that. From the moment that you turn on the machine to creating your own sound, I want to show you how quickly it can be done, too. So we're going to start. I'm going to go ahead and boot up my uh, PC3. I have a PC361. You can't see the whole thing. Um, so we're going to boot this up, and I'm going to take you through creating a virtual analog synth sound, okay, a really simple one. We're going to have a, a uh, oscillator, sawtooth oscillator, a filter, and a um, amplifier stage, and those are going to be controlled by the sliders that are on to, to the left of the screen. You have nine sliders. I want to use them, so I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, we're going to go to the default program. So over on the keypad, I hit 999 and then enter, and that will take you immediately to where you want to go. So and then to the left of the screen, off screen, you can't see it, is the edit button. I'm going to hit that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the key map. Now you land here on this key map page, and, and uh, we don't have time to really go into depth about that right now. Um, but let's just say, for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick a single cycle um, waveform key map. So this is Sawtooth Wave. All right, uh, very nice. But we're not actually going to be hearing this, because uh, we're going to be putting an oscillator uh, in the signal path that blocks this from sounding. But it'll be useful for other things later on, you'll see. Okay, so let's go to the ALG page. Okay, this is where you wire together your algorithm. Now the algorithm is actually the arrangement of blocks and how they're connected together. So I've got a two block DSP slot, a one block, and a one block, and they're all wired in series. Now as I scroll through the algorithms here, you can see that changing. Okay, so this changes uh, how you can wire stuff together and, and you can edit these um, and create new ones. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. For now we're just going to focus on algorithm number six which is going to get it, help us do what we want to do. So I want to have a sawtooth wave so I'm going to go ahead and pick saw over here. Now you probably hear that's, that's a lot hotter than the uh, sawtooth key map. Um, uh, so, so, you know, watch your volume levels when you're doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and pick now a two-pole low-pass filter. Okay, so let's go over here. There's the all-pass, there's the low-pass. Now, I don't think you can hear that, but if you can. Uh, the filter uh, is, is apparently pretty closed right now. Um, so we're going to change... Um, now I'm going to, to, to map uh, the sliders so that you can control all this, this stuff. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up this filter, okay? And paradoxically, I'm going to start by closing it, okay? I'm going to put its starting frequency at C0, okay? I'm going to come over here to source 1, and I'm going to assign data slider to control filter frequency, okay? And I'm going to set the depth to 10,800 cents. So now, as I move the data slider, it controls the cutoff frequency. Easy peasy. Okay, now I want to do the same thing with resonance. Resonance is already at 0 dB. I want to have a maximum amount. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and assign slider B to resonance, and I'm going to set this to... I'm going to set this to, uh, excuse me, I did that wrong, 12 decibels. Now, you can either scroll or you can use the number pad to punch in numbers. Um, for instance, I punched in 120, that gives me 12. It's a, it's a nice trick to know so that if you're trying to edit stuff quickly, you can just punch stuff in. You don't have to scroll and all that. Okay, so now I have some resonance in this filter. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to control the amplitude envelope for the sound. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to show you briefly the amp env page, okay, or the amp envelope page. Note that the mode is natural. What that means is this program is going to steal the key maps uh, amplitude envelope. Since this is a single cycle waveform, that envelope opens up immediately and just stays open as long as you hold down the key, okay. Now, I'm going to use the envelope control page to adjust this envelope. 
uh, to set up slider so that I can control it so that I can, you know, have a longer attack or I can have some decay or I can have some release. Um, and and I, I think I'll also do some impact too because that's kind of a fun parameter. So let's go ahead and start with attack. Okay, so my attack slider is going to be C. Okay, I already have a really fast attack. What I want to do is be able to lengthen it out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start There we go. And I'm going to change the depth to 0 0.018. Uh, what that does is that means it multiplies whatever the attack time is by 0 0.0018, which is going to make it longer. Um, so when the slider is fully up, it's multiplying by 0 0.018. When it's all the way down, it's multiplying by 1.0. Okay, so let's do the same kind of a thing with the decay. So I'm going to come over here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do MIDI 23 and I'm going to set this so that the decay time Oops, I'm sorry. I did that wrong. Uh, first of my many mistakes, I'm sure. I actually want to go the other way with decay because I want, okay, when I have the slider all the way down I want there to be no decay. Now I know that's counterintuitive to the way that other synths work, but um, for reasons that I can't explain here, this is actually about the only way you can do it. You can you can invert the way the fader works, uh, but I, I I don't have time right now to cover that. But so so for now, this slide this fader is going to work in reverse. So um, slider D, when I move it all the way up, I have a very short decay time. When I have it all the way down, I have infinite decay. Um, so let's go ahead and go on then to release. Okay, right now we don't have any release time. We want more. So as I move the slider up, let's assign the slider. There we go. Now I've got lots of release. Okay, so I have my filter frequency and resonance. I have attack, decay, and release. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do impact. Now this is what impact does. Impact adds however much you uh, indicate here to the first uh, couple of milliseconds of the envelope. Okay, so this is a good way to create a really spiky uh, transient. Okay, so with my attack, I'm going to go ahead and put my attack all the way on. Just a bit of decay. Now what? Listen to the sound as I move the impact slider up. You hear that? It's 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 distorting because it's 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 so loud right there at the initial transient. It adds a kind of a, a click right to the front of the to the front of the envelope. Okay, so there we go. We have our amplitude envelope now. One of the problems with this particular sound is that the filter is kind of static, meaning that as I play up and down the keys, the filter cutoff frequency doesn't change. I'm changing it with the slider off screen. And that's fine and good, but what we really want to do is we want to, um, I, I want to have the cutoff frequency follow which key I'm playing. Um, as that 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 is generally speaking that's more musically useful so I'm going to go to the DSP control page I'm going to go to frequency now you see here that I have key track at zero cents per key I'm going to put that to 100 cents per key okay um, and that means now if I find the resonant frequency for instance that resonant frequency is going to be the same for each key. So I have not only can I have a lot of attack, but I also have a lot of whatever the harmonic is that I'm emphasizing. All right, so there we go. That's a basic introduction to how uh, to set up a KVA sound. Um, of course, you can go back here to the algorithm page. 
I could just as easily, for instance, now switch this to be, oh, let's see, let's go ahead and pick a square wave. could pick um, anything else really that is an oscillator, sine wave, all the sine waves aren't really that interesting through filters, at least not these particular filters. Um, and pick shape saw, this is not a, um, this is not one of the nice oscillators. This one will alias up high. I don't know if you can hear that on the, the cell phone camera, but it's aliasing. Okay. Um, so that is a quick introduction to how to set up from the, turning the machine on to actually being able to play a sound or using the first five sliders to control frequency and resonance uh, and the amplitude envelope and uh, also with the sixth slider, impact. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this instructive and I will see you next time.